Hello everybody and welcome to this public engagement event to present proposals to improve the junctions at Avermill Roundabout and Hunters Lane in Rugby. This is an opportunity to find out more about this scheme and to pose questions. We're really keen to share the work to date with you and to hear your feedback. My name is Nicola van der Hoven. I'm the Head of Engineering Design Services at Warwickshire County Council and I'm joined this evening by a number of colleagues who've been working to develop this project some of whom will take part in the presentations or the panel Q&A session at the end, and some of whom are behind the virtual scene supporting the technology for the event and managing the comments as they come in. So firstly, to cover some of the housekeeping elements for the session tonight, this is being run as one of a series of information events and there's further details about the others later on within the session. Um, secondly, we're aiming to finish no later than 8.30 p.m. this evening. Now, it may be that there are questions and discussions which aren't complete by that point, but please be assured that we really are keen to receive all feedback. And I'd ask that you take time to complete the linked survey to ensure that your views are taken into account. Um, and there's a, a QR code and a web address for, for you to contact. Uh, the presentation is being recorded and it's our intention to publish this on the survey site. We will do that after the event. And finally, um, for attendees, camera, cameras and microphones don't work in the meeting mode that we're using this evening. If you wish to pay, make comments or pose any questions, then you'll need to do that through the question and answer function, which is at the top of your screen. So uh, the agenda for this evening, I'm going to start off with a bit of a summary of the process for engagement and feedback and how this all fits into the, the status of the scheme and the statutory processes that we're required to follow. And then I'll hand over to my colleague Nicholas Dauncey, who will provide a short presentation to outline the scheme proposals. And then we'll move into a question and answer panel session. And members of the team who've taken part in the development of the project to date will, will come in to answer those questions. And then we'll draw to a close. So moving on to the slides. The first thing is that there are improvements proposed to two of the junctions at Avon Mill and Hunters Lane and that these have been in development for, for quite a number of years now. One of the roles of the authority is to review the operation of the highway network, taking into account all types of vehicle users, pedestrians and cyclists and, and how that fits into the context of development and, and so on and identify where there are opportunities to provide improvements to better the facilities and improve the flow of traffic and that's exactly what's happened at this location and Nicholas will explain that in a little bit more detail as we get along. So the public engagement which is now live is seeking feedbacks, uh, seeking feedbacks from yourselves on our current proposals. We want to know what you think about our proposals and the feedback you provide will be used to refine the scheme design. So on the screen and on all of the slides there's a QR code in the corner and a web address underneath it and you can use either of those to access the consultation um, um, consultation survey, sorry. There's a facility to pose questions and comments which is now open that should be visible on your screens and can I remind you all that these will be reviewed prior to publication for public view so we will we will respond to all of the questions but we will only publish some of them particularly where there's there's duplication for example um, and that we will screen for any inappropriate language and any content like that won't be shared with a wider audience. So we'd like you to give feedback, as I said, by completing the online survey. There's a link on screen here and a QR code which you can scan. There are alternative formats of the survey which can be made available and there is an email and email address and phone number later in the slides for people to request those. And you can also submit comments in email, uh, by, in writing, by email or by post. The deadline for submitting all of responses is the 20th of March 2024. And this consultation is being carried out ahead of applying for planning permission for the scheme, which is required because of the, the type of scheme and um, how it fits into the context of the highway network and the land around it. And also before applying for further funding from the government. So the planning application will be accompanied by a series of detailed reports and assessments and you will have the opportunity also to feed back on these during the planning process. If the scheme continues as expected, then construction could potentially start in the spring or summer of next year. However, 
this is a really complex project and the start date is reliant on finalising the design and securing funding. So the, the, the suggestion of a start date there is really just to give an indication of the earliest it could possibly start. And there's a series of approvals which are also required and will be set out in the planning permission. So I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Nicholas Dauncey. He is the County Council's Principal Transport Planner and Modeller, and he's going to talk through the scheme benefits and impacts. Nick. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Nicholas Dauncey, and I've been working on the scheme for several years now, um, mainly on business case development. So as Nicholas just alluded to, um, we're currently preparing an outline business case for submission to the Department for Transport um, later this year, and that will be seeking the, the funding that we need to deliver the scheme. So just um, to give you a little bit of history, we've, we've already submitted something called a strategic outline case, um, and they're now working with the DFT on uh, agreeing the detailed requirements for the, the outline business case, um, which is the next stage in the process set by government. So I'd now like to talk you very briefly through our proposals before we uh, move over to uh, a Q&A session. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? So just to start with, I thought it might be useful just to put the scheme in context in terms of where it's located in rugby. So it's denoted by the uh, the red circle and it's located centrally on the on a, one of the major road corridors through um, in Rugby, um, which links the, the A45 to the south of Rugby um, to um, junction one of the M6 to the north and continuing on northwards up to Gibbet Hill roundabout on the A5 and just off the plan further north towards the junction 20 of the M1 at Lutterworth. Uh, so it provides a connection between the, the strategic roads to the north and south of Rugby effectively. But it also has a very important local role and is currently part of what is now being designated by the Department for Transport as a major road network. So the major road network is comprises some of the most um, economically important and, and busiest routes in the in the country, and that those type of roads carry a significant proportion or a significant number of commercial vehicles. So there are a lot of um, heavy and light goods vehicles using those routes. So the, the key role of the, of the MRN, the major road network, is to, um, to, to support the, the national and, and local economy. Um, to the south of the scheme area is one of the key uh, A road links into, into town and um, also into Rugby Duratory, which provides access to a range of other routes which uh, from uh, within the town of Rugby and, and beyond. What's also interesting um, to look at on the plan is the, the, the shaded areas of um, housing developments, which are shaded in, in, in light brown and major employment developments, which is shaded purple. So there's going to be a lot of additional traffic in rugby when all this development comes forward. And uh, as you'll see in a minute, this is one of the, the main drivers behind the, the need for the scheme. Um, could I have the next slide, please? So we've summarised here some of the key reasons why why we need the scheme, why we need to to um, improve um, traffic conditions at the scheme location. So I think those of you who are familiar with the area will will know that the the um, the junctions become significantly congested during peak periods, and the delays caused by that congestion can often lead to traffic diverting onto unsuitable routes in the town. Secondly, there's a, a difficulty for uh, vehicles trying to access the main road from the side road, such as Hunters Lane and Avon Mill Lane, to actually get onto the main road when, it, when it's particularly busy. And there, there's an associated collision risk with that, uh, that, that uh, access, move, that movement to, to gain access to the main road. And, and very often people are taking risks where there, there aren't suitable gaps in the main road traffic. And I'm thinking particularly at Hunter's Lane Junction. Thirdly, there are there is certainly limited provision for walking and cycling in the scheme area. It's very dominated by traffic, 
there, there's no segregated route for pedestrians and cyclists to, to provide a, a safe corridor for them. And this deficiency has been identified in, in other public consultation that we've already done. Fourthly, there's a lot of um, difficulty for, for bus operators who want to run services through the scheme location. Um, our discussions with Stagecoach, the bus operator, has flagged the, their concerns about congestion in the area um, and the fact that that increases bus journey times, which obviously makes services less reliable and is also a deterrent to, to people using those buses. Um, as we've already seen, there are a lot of new houses and jobs planned for rugby in, in the, the Rugby Borough Local Plan. So our predictions show that con congestion is going to get much worse as, as more people travel through the area, particularly around the scheme. In addition to that, the, the closure of the existing bridge for maintenance or, or due to a, an incident or accident would have very adverse environmental impacts in the area because traffic would, would be forced to divert onto other less suitable routes, um, there being only one a single bridge at the moment. And last but not least, the fact that vehicle emissions from increasing volumes of slow moving traffic are having an impact on local air quality. So there's a, certainly an environmental imperative towards doing something about the problem. Could I have the next slide, please? So what we see in front of us on this slide is the proposed scheme layout, and I'll come on to the each individual element of the scheme in a, in a moment or two. But essentially the proposal is to enlarge the Avon Mill roundabout and put a new roundabout in at the junction of Hunters Lane to provide a set of um, dual carriageway connecting the two roundabouts and also a segregated foot cycle bridge. Could I have the next slide, please? So starting at the northern end of the scheme, um, the proposal is to enlarge the Avon Mill roundabout to make it possible for two vehicles to travel side by side around the circulatory carriageway in the middle and to widen all the approaches to three lanes and also widen the exits to, um, to two lanes on the Newbold Road um, on both A426 and A4071 Newbold Road to two lanes on the exits. In addition to that, the, the, addition, the existing pedestrian crossing on the Leicester Road to the north of the Avon Mill roundabout, the proposal there is to upgrade that to a Toucan crossing and widen it so it can be used by both pedestrians and cyclists. Could I have the next slide, please? <coughs> Excuse me. So on this slide, the existing T-junction at Hunters Lane is proposed to be replaced with a new roundabout, which will connect also connect onto a realigned Avon Mill Lane to improve access to the uses to Southern Trent and the, the car dealership um, accessed off that side of the roundabout. Could I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> Excuse me, what you see on this slide is that um, the existing road and road bridge over the River Avon will be retained and will carry two lanes of southbound traffic from Avon Mill roundabout towards the Hunters Lane roundabout. Secondly, a new bridge and section of road will be bridge will be built, sorry, south of the current road bridge to provide a two lanes for traffic traveling north from the Hunters Lane roundabout towards Avon Mill, with a third lane provided at the approach to, to, to the Avon Mill roundabout. Thirdly, a new bridge north of the existing bridge will carry a foot cycleway. <clears throat> this will replace the, new, the narrow footway which is bolted onto the existing road bridge. The bridge will form part of a new cycle route which, which will connect the existing route on the western side of the Leicester Road with Wood Street. Finally, there'll, there'll be a new left in, left out only access junction into the um, Starbucks drive through facility and also the adjacent residential properties, excuse me. Could I have the next slide, please? So the, the traffic effects of the scheme have been ex analysed in a traffic model of the rugby, wider rugby area, which is a computerised representation of traffic movements in the town. <clears throat> 
the model has been recently updated in the scheme area to represent post pandemic traffic conditions in 2023. We've been working closely with the D Department for Transport to agree the, the, the process for, for doing that. So a series of future models have been created to evaluate the scheme proposals. <clears throat> and in terms of the model outputs, we're looking at queues, journey times and traffic flows with and without the scheme. If you'd like to look at the results in a little bit more detail, there's a traffic modeling summary document available uh, online. We can provide you with the slides after so you can click on the link. And similarly, there's a, a video showing how the junction would operate with and without the scheme um, in place. Could I have the next slide, please? Just to give you a few examples of some of the, the outputs that we've been looking at from the model. We've uh, focused initially on the, the journey time benefits which arise when the scheme has been delivered. So we're looking at three key routes. Um, so on the Leicester Road, the purple route from M6 Junction 1 down to the Avon Mill roundabout. Um, the yellow route from um, Little Orford Lane, Main Street in Newbold into the Avon Mill roundabout. And thirdly, the northbound approach to the Avon Mill roundabout from town, the red route. Could I have the next slide, please? So this first slide is showing that um, the, the, the performance in terms of journey times with and without the scheme on the Leicester Road south westbound approach to the junction at Avon Mill. So the Leicester Road is the busiest approach to the roundabout and is often heavily congested during peak hours. So from the from the chart, what the chart is showing is that there are going to be um, predicted improvements in average journey time in both the AM and PM weekday peak travel periods in each of our forecast years. These improvements are highest in 2041 as the scheme is able to accommodate significant traffic growth on the network, which has resulted from the new houses and jobs in the area. Could I have the next slide, please? So this chart is looking at the, the A426 Newbold Road northbound approach from town. Now this approach often suffers from significant congestion and lengthy delays, particularly in the, the weekday PM periods on, on a Saturday. There are long queues of slow moving traffic, which often block back through every way roundabout towards Rugby Directory on this approach. And one of the reasons for that is that traffic has to give way to a very heavy right turning movement from Leicester Road, which is heading towards the Rugby Western Relief Road. In addition to that, there's also a heavy right turn movement from this approach, turning right onto Leicester Road. And the queues block left turning traffic from accessing the inside lane. So as we can see from the chart, particularly on the PM chart to the right, the modelling shows significant improvements in average journey times in, in this in the PM period. Um, and that's created by the two the, the two lane approach being available for the right turn towards Leicester Road and an unimpeded left turn lane, um, left turn lane from Newbold Road. Could I have the next slide, please? So currently this approach is the second busiest at the roundabout <clears throat> and carries around about um, 1000 vehicles per hour during the, the AM and the PM weekday peak hours. So the chart is showing that there's there's no real change in average journey times on, on this approach and that's despite the significant increase in traffic using the roundabout. Could I have the next slide please? So in addition to traffic impacts, we've also been looking at some of the environmental impacts with our colleagues in, in at Warwickshire County Council. So they're looking at the environmental impacts of the scheme, which is predicted to impact on the river, woodland and other sensitive habitats during construction and, and also when complete. So at the moment, a, a number of ecological surveys and assessments are being undertaken and plans are being developed to make sure that when we're constructing the scheme, um, we protect habitats for various species in the area, including badgers and water voles. 
So the project is aiming to improve biodiversity through landscaping, tree planting and other potential improvements which are currently being developed. The planning application will include those, those details in, in, um, in various reports and will also include assessments of scheme effects on air quality and dust, noise and vibration, traffic and transportation, which we've just touched on, cultural heritage and archaeology in the area, and also whether there's any contaminated land. Any mitigation measures which may be needed will be identified at, at the planning application stage. Could I have the next slide, please? In addition to the ecological um, aspects of the scheme and other environmental um, matters, we're also in the process of reviewing the flood risk associated with the new bridges and, and other scheme elements um, because there'll be a, a lot of ad additional carriageway and hard servicing in the area. So we've had initial engagement with the Environment Agency to agree the, the technical flood modelling requirements um, for that assessment. So the flood risk and drainage assessments are being prepared to support the planning application and those will be reviewed in detail by the Environment Agency. We're expecting to provide flood compensation of the, on the field next to the Avon Mill Recreation Ground, which we'll also be looking to landscape. And I think it's important to note that our assessments meet the requirement set out by the Environment Agency for future flood risk and take into account the impact of climate change. Could I have the next slide, please? In terms of the carbon impacts, the scheme is designed to, to reduce carbon emissions in the course of travel by encouraging people to switch from car to active travel modes for local journeys. So by reducing congestion and delays, the scheme is also expected to make bus travel a more attractive option. Um, at the moment, there are very few services which route through the junction because it's so heavily congested. And also to reduce travel distances as, as traffic will be less likely to divert away from Avon Mill to avoid delays. So in discussion with DFT, a carbon management plan is being developed for our business case in accordance with government guidance. And this will report scheme impacts on road user greenhouse gas emissions and quantify the whole life carbon costs of the scheme. Could I have the next slide, please? So in terms of the construction impacts, um, as Nicola has already mentioned, there is the potential to start construction next year uh, by either spring or summer in 2025. The construction period will last approximately 18 months. And if that all goes according to plan, potential scheme opening would be in spring 2027. All of this is subject to finalising the design, securing the required funding and approvals. So our initial work suggests that most of the scheme can be built offline without impacting on existing traffic flows. However, there will be periods, particularly during the later construction phases, where temporary traffic lights and other forms of traffic management will be necessary, and this will create delays. We will be discussing the, the construction impacts and, and proposals to mitigate them with the appointed works contractor. Thank you. I'm now going to hand back over to uh, Nicola van der Hoven. Thanks very much, Nicholas. And just a reminder, the slides will be available on the survey site after the event, so there's an opportunity to go back. And as, as said, there are some links within that. So there are some links to collect uh, to click on to look for a little bit of further information if you're interested. So I am uh, going to bring in now the, the, the rest of the panel. So we have Nicholas Dorsey, who has just been speaking. There is Burpinder Candola, who is the project manager. He works in engineering design services. Uh, Chet Patel, who's part of the highway capital team. Stephen Rumble, who's the transport planning service manager with a focus on active travel. And Barney Newbold, who's the associate director for transport modeling with SLR Consulting. So thanks everybody. I, I think the way this works is that, that I'm, I'm on screen and and I can bring the other people in as there are questions to answer. So just having a look at the questions and answers, I can see that there haven't been any posed just yet, 
um, I'd encourage people to pose those questions and I do have a couple here to start off with, but but as always, there is an opportunity to pose questions, raise comments and so on through the, the different mechanisms through the, the survey site and the, the web link, which is on the, the final slide that we have in a second. So if you have anything that you'd like to ask, then please do do that. So but just to kick things off. Um, uh, I don't I don't know who would like to answer this question. But we're just having a bit of a think about what what might be interesting to talk about. I think the, the first thing and probably the thing that's on the top of everybody's head is that we are currently in something of a climate emergency that has been announced across the world. People are really interested in how we tackle continued use of car or the appropriateness of um, highway improvement schemes or um, how how we are dealing with the impact of the climate. So the question really is, should we really be building more roads or should we be relying on the other transport solutions that are available to us? So shall I maybe ask that question to Nicholas first and then we can see whether perhaps the, the others in the panel would like to answer? Uh, yes, thank you, Nicola. Um, yes, I think... Um, the scheme has, has been des designed in accordance with the, the guidance for the major road network, which DFT specifies. And we have to demonstrate that it will facilitate um, movements by non-car modes, essentially. So this is one of the key reasons why we are we are proposing to provide uh, new foot cycleway connections with a new bridge and, and cycle route um, on the, the eastern side of the scheme. Um, also by trying to address some of the congestion problems at the junction. We're, we're trying to um, encourage bus operators to route more services through the junction. Um, and we're hoping that the, the improvements to bus journey times for existing services will, will help to retain um, existing passengers. And also um, encourage new passengers to use the, those particular services and, and any others which are, are introduced in, in the future. Um, I think it, it, in terms of the scale of the, um, the sort of growth aspirations in rugby, um, we have a local plan which has um, has planned growth of over 12,000 houses between now and 2031. A uh, significant amount of employment land, approximately 100 hectares, I believe, um, and also proposals to increase retail space in the town. So the, the combined traffic impact, if you like, of all that that additional traffic on the network generated by those developments um, really does mean that we, we do need to try and uh, reduce environmental impacts at the scheme location, which, which are manifesting themselves at the moment and, and will only get worse as traffic growth uh, increases in the town. Um, I think because of the, the location of the scheme in terms of its um, key um, sort of point on the, on, on the major road network, we're only ever going to see increases in um, private vehicle traffic and freight traffic in, in terms of the, the, the future traffic demands at the junction. And I think unless we do something to address the uh, the environmental impacts of those by alleviating congestion, um, that's only going to going to make the the environmental uh, impact worse in the town. Thank you. Um, I wonder, Stephen. Perhaps you would like to to pass comment on this from an active travel perspective. Yeah, thank you, Nicola. I was I was going to come in uh, at that point anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Nick just highlighted on the fact that um, at the moment there are very limited opportunities for people to to cycle in this area. There's a real key missing link in the in the local cycling network. And in fact, we know from data that we have collected that there are quite a number of cyclists choosing to cycle on the existing, what is quite a narrow footway between um, Leicester Road and, and over the, the footbridge um, towards Wood Street. And in fact, we, we did a count back in November, um, so fairly late in the year um, uh, on a midweek day, Wednesday. Um, and we recorded 134 cyclists using the um, footway and just 27 on the road. And I think that's really indicative of the fact that the conditions on the road do not support people um, to cycle. Um, 
but cyclists, people are feeling safer and, and um, happier to cycle on the footway. What we want to do is, is open up space to in, encourage more people. And at the moment, those cyclists who choose to do that, well, it, it's a footway, so, so in, in theory, they shouldn't be. Um, so I think what we're doing with this scheme is introducing choice to people, um, choices that aren't there at the moment. Um, and we're we're opening up new opportunities for traveling by cycle. Um, and I think we're also making it more a more pleasant environment for people walking as, as well. We're moving the um, footway um, where it crosses the river away from the road, um, providing a, a or proposing to provide a, a, a new foot cycle bridge that's that's quite wide and will be much better at accommodating all of those movements um, without being right next to the traffic as, as you are now, which can be a fairly intimidating environment and, and quite noisy um, um, where, where they're located. So so yeah, opportunities, I think, to, to really improve um, journeys to by active modes to locations like the station, like the town centre, to Avon Valley School as well. Thank you, Stephen. That's really helpful. It's good, good bit of extra information as well. Um, so, so another question, and and perhaps something that um, I've heard asked at sessions like this previously, is where we are trying to um, improve the traffic flow at a particular location. There, there's often quite a lot of concern about what impact that might have on traffic elsewhere on the network. Um, and whether or not that that just moves the queues, perhaps. So I wonder, I don't know if that's particularly a question that, that Nicholas or maybe Barney might like to answer. Yes, thank you, Nicola. Um, so we've taken a look at the some of the model outputs um, around the scheme area in the in the opposite direction from the ones we've looked at in the presentation. So heading away from the Avon Mill Junction. <clears throat> and what that appears to, to show is that the um, the journey times on the routes heading out from Avon Mill roundabout, um, there's not much change effectively. So it doesn't appear to be that, it doesn't appear that the um, the additional traffic throughput that is facilitated by the scheme is having a knock on impact in terms of the surrounding junctions. So we, we haven't seen any evidence for that. The, the one slight difference is that the um, the provision of the new roundabout at Hunters Lane does require vehicles to slow down in the way they don't actually have to at the moment. So they have to slow down to give way to, to vehicles turning right into Hunters Lane at the new roundabout, um, which, which isn't happening obviously at the moment. So there is a slight, um, slight increase in delay if you're heading south from Leicester Road towards Hunters Lane. <clears throat> but, but no evidence that further junctions downstream at, at Deborah Way or Rugby Duratory are, are being affected by the by the scheme in any uh, negative um, way. I don't know whether Barney has anything further to to add to that, Barney Newbold. <clears throat> uh, yeah, thanks, Nick. The, the only thing I probably add to that is that the model is suggesting that delivery of the scheme um, kind of reduces the uh, potential rat running that we've been seeing in a scenario where the scheme isn't delivered. So. Um, when the, we start to see congestion building around the Avon Mill Junction, uh, the models indicating that uh, traffic will increasingly reroute or, or route form there and onto other routes through the town, in particular thinking uh, Mill Road and Technology Drive and, and under the railway arch there. Um, so actually delivery of the scheme kind of allows traffic to stay on the more uh, natural route of carrying on on the A426 and, and has the potential to, to alleviate um, potential issues on on Mill Road and, and those alternative routes as well. So um, that, that in terms of the knock on effects elsewhere, um, that's the most notable um, impact we've seen it. And I think that's um, um, reduced the amount of rat running that is occurring in, the, in those parts of the town. Thanks, Barney. That's really helpful. So um, we have we have got a comment that's just come in, um, which is about vehicle movement around Baker Street and some of the side roads. Um, I don't know if one of the team would like to pick up on some of the points made in there. I think this is to do with cycling congestion, CO2 emission and so on. So thank you very much for the question. Um, Stephen, perhaps. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Nicola. I'll I'll start. Um, I'm actually wondering if this question relates to um, a planning condition um, on the the development um, around Baker Street, um, which was imposed a number of years ago, um, which was for um, which was to create a through route um, following Hunters Lane and and up to through Baker Street to to join Technology Drive. Um, so there was a planning condition that the developer would create a, a street, Baker Street, uh, that could be used for that purpose um, and that um, the County Councillors Highway Authority uh, would subsequently look to open up the route um, through um, where currently it, it's it's uh, stopped up um, at the end of Hunter's Lane. Um, so the the position with that scheme um, and that project um, at the moment is that I think we recognise that we're in quite a different situation to where we were when that planning condition was um, originally um, introduced. Um, it is something we um, have that we we can still look at. Um, but I think we would have to be very conscious um, of the impacts of sending through traffic through a residential area, uh, and that's not necessarily something we would want to do. Um, and I think it's also worth um, highlighting that from the traffic modelling and the predictions and forecasts we have for the way that traffic flows will work in the future, I think it's questionable now, given given the changes we've seen with with traffic flows, as to whether um, it is as as essential um, as uh, as it was in the past. Um, Nick, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Thank you, Steve. No, I think you've you've sort of hit the the sort of key points of that. I think the world in which we lived when the planning condition was originally um, imposed was a, um, a slightly different world from the one we know see before us um, and I think it, I, I agree I think it would be quite difficult to justify um, potentially releasing large volumes of, of traffic and all types of traffic including um, HDVs uh, to um, to enter as, as a sort of through through traffic through a, through a quiet residential area which is, is uh, recently been um, created around the Baker Street area um, so I think it's 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 difficult to um, perhaps think of a world where where we would um, progress with that scheme unless we looked at uh, a few other alternative options. So that there might be an opportunity to look at a potential cycle route through the area uh, to link up with the Black Path and to tie in with this, this, the proposals for the Avon Mill scheme. Although we haven't actually broached that with any any of the stakeholders yet, so this this is still um, going to be a work in progress. I think. Thank you for that, Nicholas. I I hope that answers the question that was posed. If if uh, if it doesn't quite, and you'd like to um, uh, pose that in a slightly different way, then please please go ahead and do it. Um, I've I've got a. There aren't any other questions that have come in, so I have got. A couple of other points which I think are worthwhile exploring with the panel. Um, the first one is about um, construction and traffic management. People are often very concerned about the impact of construction projects on through traffic, on um, uh, delays, people getting to where they need to be during the peak hours and so on. Um, I know that um, Pinder and Chet on the panel have have a lot of experience working on highway schemes and um, putting putting you slightly on the spot, but I wonder if there's anything you can say to the audience about how we look to manage um, through traffic and how we look to manage the construction process to minimise the impact as far as we possibly can. So I go to maybe Bapinda first. Yes, thank you, Nicola. Um, yeah, we uh, the design teams uh, looked at the uh, construction of the of the scheme, and um, we are. We're anticipating that we won't cause much uh, disruption to uh, the flow of traffic 
um, at, at present. Um, the first uh, year we we think this we broke it down into four phases. The first phase we we, we believe will take about a year to do, which is the uh, the new uh, bridge on on the south side of the um, the scheme. It might be worth if you could bring up the slide um, showing the scheme layout. I think it'll be easier for for everybody to visualise that. Was it slide four or five? I believe. Mm. Sorry, Bavinda, which slide did you want? Slide four or five showing the plan of the scheme. Yeah. Oops, gone past it. There we go. There we go. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, the, the, the new bridge is, is on the south side of the existing bridge. Uh, so that was the first phase that we believe um, the contractor will construct. So that's a lot of the work will be done there, which is the um, the south side of the, of the new roundabout at Hunter's Lane, including the, the road into Avon Mill Lane, uh, the new bridge over the, over the River Avon, and then the um, widening of the existing road, um, the new ball road going north northwest, um, and then phase two, uh, and then the 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 reason why we want to we believe that will be the first first item that will be phased that will will be uh, constructed is because we can then use the old bridge uh, for the um, traffic to be maintained along that, and then that won't cause. Um, any more disruption than what it currently is, because I know that route is quite slow at the moment, uh, but then uh, we're not going to make it any worse, so traffic should be able to come in and out um, as, as it is currently. Uh, the second phase is we will then open the um, the new bridge over, over the river, and then the second phase is working on the north side, so we'll be um, uh, um, doing um, remedial works to, to the existing bridge, um, and then then building the new foot, footbridge as well um, on the north side of the river, uh, very close to the, the Starbucks site. And again, the, the new bridge would then be used for, for the traffic. And again, that's, that's two lanes in, in either direction. And again, it, the impact of the traffic going through there won't be any worse. We, we don't envisage than what it currently is uh, running. Um, and then the third third um, phase is is virtually working on the main round, but itself again a lot of that will be carried off. But we'll have traffic running on both the the new bridge uh, once it's been um, uh, brought up to standard, and then and also on the new bridge uh, on the south side. And again, and as we will be having as we'll be able to use both bridges, we should then see some of the benefits of the, of the scheme that, that, that we, we are proposing. Um, and so we'll have two lanes coming both north and south uh, along both those two routes. Uh, the final phase, phase four, is, is um, mainly the work to be finished around about the Hunters Lane area. And again, we, we don't envisage any issues there in terms of traffic um, uh, but that's all based on what we think the traffic is um, currently um, currently um, currently uh, traffic volumes are, are, are current um, if we do get any other schemes um, undertaken during our works and as we've, we've alluded it, we, we do estimate it'll take about 18 months then the, the there may be um, a slight impact but we will uh, work with, with the network management team and ensure that we'll try and minimize as much of the impact as possible i don't know if chat wants to add anything to that um, thank you, Bupinda. I think the only thing I'll I'll just add on there is, um, as you described with those construction sequences, um, there will be a significant amount uh, done offline so that the existing network um, can continue to run. It won't be exactly as existing because you will have uh, a number of construction plant uh, moving to and fro. But nevertheless, uh, with works occurring offline. Um, for some stages of the of the of the project, um, hopefully, yeah, that won't mean it's uh, completely catastrophic for for the whole of the eighteen months. 
Um, what I what I think I can also um, add is we will be doing um, construction management. Sorry. Um, traffic management plans, uh, doing associated modeling with that as well to see how that will uh, impact the network and where we can, we'll try to um, make changes um, ahead of time, also reactively to try and minimize disruption, um, which is quite typical for construction um, highway schemes. Thank you, Chet and, and Bapinda. Thank you very much, That's that's really helpful. So um, I think and the final question really is how how do we know that this is going to happen? Who wants to answer that? <laughs> Stephen. Yeah, everyone's staying very quiet, aren't they? So uh, it's a, yeah, it's a no, difficult question, a... isn't it, at this stage in the game? How how do we actually know? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think the answer is at this stage, um, we don't know it is definitely going ahead. Um, so the, we are progressing um, development of the scheme um, as part of our commitment to improving the local transport network, uh, but delivery is not confirmed. We can't go ahead uh, until it secures planning permission. Uh, so that's uh, quite a detailed assessment process that the scheme um, needs to go through and it can't go ahead until we have secured all of the funding um, that we need to, uh, for it. So there is a further uh, piece of work for us to complete um, for us to, to um, essentially submit our plans to government um, and seek uh, funding uh, from them. We're hoping to um, submit the planning application and submit that uh, business case later uh, in 2024 uh, and then we'll be in a, a much better position to know uh, that the scheme uh, is or is going ahead. Thank you Stephen and I, th and I think as well for for the benefit of all of the residents and the, the, the people who are using the roads around rugby as, as we get that information and as we have the confirmation and as we prepare and, and hopefully are able to start construction, but as we prepare for that, there'll be lots of information going out so that people can anticipate the roadworks and, and will understand what's happening before, before it actually does. Oh, I can see that there's another question come through into the chat. Oh yes, yeah, so this is this is again about Hunter's Hunter's Lane. So it it is the case Hunter's Lane and the Baker Street link is not going to be opened up again. That's not part of what this scheme will do. Okay. If there are any further questions, please please pose pose them. But I'm going to draw the session to a close now. So if I could ask for the final slide to be brought up because that's got some of the details about the next steps. So as I said already, the online survey is open now and it will close on the 20th of March uh, 2024. You can access the survey via the web link there. So warwickshire.gov.uk forward slash ask and that will take you through to this particular survey. There's also the QR code that's in the bottom of the screen here and is on the bottom of all the slides and the slides will be shared after the event. Um, on the survey page. Um, the background information, these slides, all the documents and a set of frequently asked questions will also be available on the survey page for people to look at, review, think about and we are really keen to hear all of the suggestions and feedback that people might want to say. Um, there are going to be some drop-in sessions in rugby later on this week so Tomorrow, Thursday, the 22nd of February, between four o'clock and seven o'clock at the Ben Hall. And some of the members of the team who are present this evening will be there. And again, on Saturday, the 24th of February, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. at Rugby Central Shopping Centre. There are contact details here. So apart from the survey, um, there's an email address, avamill at warwickshire.gov.uk 
and a telephone number 01926 410410, which is the council's main contact number. But if um, if you ask for somebody to speak to Avon Mill, sorry, to speak to about Avon Mill, then um, one of the people who are probably here on the on the call this evening will be available. Um, so it just leaves me to thank you all for attending. Um, again, please say if there's any further questions or feedback, we're, we're always pleased to receive all kinds of information. It really helps us in the, the development and delivery of the schemes. Um, uh, thank you to colleagues for, for attending the session as well and presenting. So good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.